everybody. Thanks for coming in. I have a special guest that announced last week. God, it seems like it seems like forever. But last week, I have the commissioner of the National Arena League, Chris Siegfried, here. Man, I tell you what, I gotta get the part of my tongue cut off because I just can't talk. Um, man, welcome, Chris. Welcome back. You were on the show before. Always great to be here. It's a pleasure. Turn it on. Always great to be here. <laughs> it's a pleasure. <laughs> I guess I got to talk into it a little bit better. Sorry about that. That's all right. That's all right. Hey, listen, a lot's been going on with the NAL, um, man, in the past few weeks. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what's been going on? For somebody who's not been on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and see everything that's working with the NAL. A lot of behind the scenes stuff going on with expansion. Uh, still some more expansion news to be announced in the next uh, few days and coming weeks, maybe more than just this week. So, uh, you know, the powers that be behind the scenes have been working very hard uh, along myself. Um, our expansion chairman, Jason Gibson, over there with the Columbus Lions, uh, he's been doing a, just a fantastic job with, uh, with expansion. And of course, uh, this Thursday morning, we, we should have an announcement this Thursday morning, so we're looking forward to that. We're going to keep everybody uh, uh, waiting until then, we can't say anything until then, but it's going to be a huge, uh, if not a monumental announcement. So there's going to be an announcement uh, this Thursday morning, right? Thursday morning, sometime in between 10.30 and 11 o'clock. We haven't quite dialed in the time exactly, but we're estimating shortly up to 10.30 a.m. Okay. Hey, uh, hey, Nick Green, can you hear the commissioner okay back there? Louder. You need the commissioner to be louder? All right. Bear with me one second. I know what the deal is. You got it. issue that he's going to figure out. Well, anyway, here at Fish on Fire, we have our weekly special. Just uh, get, your, get your server or go up to the bar and uh, make your order. I don't remember what I had last week, but it was good. I think it was shrimp, fried shrimp, I think, last week. Very, very good. So I definitely recommend the fried shrimp. Speaking of that, hey, listen, everybody here that is in Fish on Fire, if you guys could do everybody a favor, if you're sitting at your tables or sitting at the bar, you do not have to wear your mask, but if you get up to go to another table or if you get up to use the facilities, you go up, stand up, and go to the bar, please put your mask on. We want these guys to stay open. They've been amazing, so uh, help them out by just following the, the new rules, all right? Thank you very much on that. Uh, let's see here. Thursday, we're talking about Thursday expansion. Is how many teams have already joined in now? As far as so, our, so our total right now is nine teams. You know, we've got uh, three new teams that have joined us: uh, Tampa Bay, uh, Baltimore, and Louisville. So this will be the fourth expansion team making ten. Uh, we. We are anticipating one of our previous teams not returning for various reasons, uh, and that's Massachusetts. So, so Mass will not be coming back. I, I don't think so. They they, uh, they don't return calls and emails and text messages. So uh, that's just a Massachusetts thing. That's true. I think they're on some strict restrictions. They're not allowed to use their phones, but. Uh, yeah, we'll see. You know, we, we have open dialogue with them, like meaning we, we you know, we're, we're more than happy to talk with them about their future. But, uh, you know, we're solid in the direction we're going. The owners that we have, you know, are, are very uh, confident moving forward in the direction we're, we're, we're heading. So uh, uh, we want nothing but good partners, and, and if they want to open the dialogue again, we're, we're, we're listening. Okay, so the door is not shut completely on the Pirates. Never, absolutely never. If, if they want to come back home, back home to the NAL, is it very, it's very possible that they can come back in and... A absolutely. You know, uh, I did talk briefly with one of the owners. Uh, the other owner is the one that I'm having trouble communicating with, but uh, he's... I told them we're very receptive about keeping the, keeping the dialogue open and seeing where the future holds. And uh, if they decide to re-engage with us, great. If they don't, we're going to wish them the best of luck. We, we want them to be successful. And, uh, you know, we'll just see what happens. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll deal with that when the time comes. But in the meantime, we're going to concentrate on the teams that we do have on board. Well, that's good. I, I like 
I like the way the direction that it's going because it's growing and growing and growing. Then that just brings up to my next question. Is there a limit to how many teams you want to bring in for the 2021 season? No, there's no there's no definitive limit, but we, we have to expand the right way, and, and that only means it's, the number's not as important as having good partners. And you have to have good partners that, that want to be in the National League and, and play the arena style of football and, and grow with us. The more teams, the merrier, but, you know, I mean, we've had some, some teams express interest from the other side of the country, but at this point in time, it just doesn't make a lot of sense uh, geographically to add one team out in, like, you know, you know, South Dakota, for example. That's a sure. bad example. I'm not well, saying that's, yeah, yeah. I mean, it it's, just doesn't fit in the geographical footprint yet. As, as far as, like, how far west do you want to go to where it's still feasible for for startup teams to travel, you know, because that's, that's a lot of distance. If you don't have competition nearby, it, it doesn't make a lot of sense to join a league. In this case, we're primarily East Coast based, you know. I think that, you know, as we continue to expand, whether it be this year or the following years, then, then we're going to start targeting the central part of the country. But you can't just add one team from uh, Kansas. It just doesn't make sense. It actually makes more sense for them to join one of the other leagues, geographically speaking, because one of the big costs in this sport is, is travel. And, uh, you know, it's just one area that, that, you know, it's all about controlling your uh, expenditures. So that's one thing that, you know, teams need to be aware of. If you have a team in, when we use Kansas, for example, every time they travel, it's going to be an expensive trip, somewhere between fifteen and $20,000. dollars it's just it's not a good business model. But if they have four or five teams around them where they can play the majority of their games and then have what we call, like, one crossover type of game, then that would make more sense to a team in the Midwest or even the Far West. Here's a question I just thought of, and I'm going to throw it out there. Has the league ever or in the future thought about getting an airline as a sponsor for the league to cover some of that cost? Yeah, absolutely. We, we do have a couple of teams that have airline deals right now, but we just don't have a league-wide deal. Uh, now that we're going to be a minimum of 10 teams, now it makes more sense for uh, – some, some to get some national sponsorship, so to speak. So we're definitely going to be working on that. I know that one owner in particular is working on a national sponsor with a certain company that won't go unnamed at this point in time, but it's a major delivery type company, and obviously we're, we're more attractive with 10 teams, and, and you know they're taking a serious look at us, so that would be a great time to do that. Good news, good. We'll talk later. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, now, as far as teams coming in, all right, there's really no limit on how many teams really so far. When's the cutoff date? Because I know there's got to be some sort of a cutoff date for teams wanting to join the NAL because we're growing fast and, and we're, we're showing nothing but positive things out there. Is there a cutoff date? Yeah, July 31st. What's the cutoff date? Uh, it's a unique year because of everything that's happened with this uh, uh, COVID out there, so you know you have to be fluid with with movement. So you know, obviously we didn't want to. You know we were the last league to you know cancel the season, which really sucked. But you know everything is fluid with COVID. But uh, we'll be readdressing our our what I call our key dates moving forward. And uh, the goal is to stick to them, you know, 100%. But obviously we were throwing a, a heck of a curveball this year, and uh, we've had to make adjustments. So uh, one of the things that is allowing us to continue with expansion right now is actually the, 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 the fact that some of our arenas haven't even given us dates for the 2021 season. I mean, once you once you have your dates and you create a, uh, a, a schedule, it's pretty much done, right? Right. But it's allowed us that opportunity to have some last-minute uh, teams join our league. And... Uh, you know, the one on Thursday and then maybe some more uh, down the road in the next couple of weeks. So, uh, 
you know, we're excited about it. If, if nothing happens past this Thursday, we're going to be really excited with 10 teams. And if we get some more teams uh, after that, we, we could have as many as uh, 15 to 17 teams. So I'm, I'm not sure if that's going to happen, but it's very possible. Are you reading my parts? I mean, you know, it's like, how many teams? That's my next question. How, how many teams are we realistically looking for, you know, in 2021 season? So, realistically, I'd say 10. Optimistically, I'd say as many as 16. But 10 is probably going to be the number. Uh, but there's some moving parts out there that, that could change that in, in a positive way. It has to be a, 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 the right situation and the right type of teams to, to, that, to come in. We've had a number of other teams you know, that, have, that have talked to us and they just uh, we didn't feel like either we didn't feel that they were ready uh, to join our league or they didn't feel like they were ready for whatever reason. But, uh, you know, we'll see. You know, Thursday's big and, and Thursday's announcement could be a game changer for a lot of teams that are motivated, but this might make them more motivated. So we'll see where it goes. Let's, let's just I, I see I know what's going you know, on. I, I know. know. I yeah, and you know. And I'm sure it, everybody here probably knows. Probably we, knows. we just can't you know make the official announcement and that's uh that's out of respect for the uh, for the city and the arena. Absolutely. And, and the powers that be up there. I'm very excited about it. Yeah, me, me too. I think everybody uh, everybody's excited about it. Uh, I was talking to Ron and Nate about it earlier and they're like they're really anxious to find out who it is, so uh, you know. <laughs> Well, don't <laughs> keep them in the dark. They're, gotta, they're excited. They'll too. just have to tune in on Thursday, won't they? They will. They will. <laughs> I mean, speaking of uh, Nate and Ron and, and Ben, uh, it, it's a kind of an interesting group that we have over there. Obviously, the fans can't see it. They're, they're just off to our left over here. But Ben's coming off of uh, reconstructive knee surgery. Replacement. Ooh. Replacement surgery. He had total knee replacement surgery. He had yes. a scar about yes. eight inches long. <laughs> no, he showed it to me. That's, that's rough. Of course, uh, Nate's, uh, Nate just likes having shoulder surgery, so uh, he keeps going back for more and more. Yeah, off season, and, uh, in season. He just likes wearing a cap. I think he likes the attention. Maybe. And, and as far as Ron, I don't know how to make it sound better than just he sneezed and broke his rib. I mean, what else can you say? Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> but collectively, I mean, uh, it's been, it's. I feel bad for these guys. Last week, talking to Ron, he was in a lot of pain. I mean, he really probably should get your ribs checked out. Sure enough, he's got cracked ribs. Uh, so hopefully, he's feeling a little bit better. I think he is a little bit better. Nate, Nate just keeps having shoulder issues. So, uh, but no, great, great crew over there, and, and of course, uh, happy to see Ben on his feet because I know he was in a lot of pain when I talked to him the other day. So he was, he was pretty miserable, but great to see him up and around a, a little bit. Anyway, I'm happy to see Ben. Period. I haven't seen him, and he grew up, got himself a goatee going on. He's got his leg all propped up. And looks bandaged. like he's working out. Lost some weight. Looks, lost some looks, weight. He's looks looking. ten years younger. He looks like he's in his sixties now. So uh. Is it, I know. And that's the scary part because he's only. I think Ben's what fifty. He's a couple years older than me. I'm fifty-one. You're about fifty-five. You're fifty-eight. You look great for fifty-eight. You look great for fifty-eight. <laughs> Just to throw it out there too, um, when I had Herky Walls on the show, he wants to do something with Ben and. And Herky, as far as Ben throwing a pass to Herky when he runs a route, and now that he's getting a new knee, it, this this could you know Herky, if you're watching, we yeah. can make this happen. Talk about Herky, man! I mean, what a great person he is, uh, and always in great shape. He looks like he can still play. He probably could still play, honestly. I yeah. tell you, yeah, absolutely. But, uh, yeah, I love Herky Walls. I'd love to see uh, Ben and Herky go and throw a post pattern, you know, once or twice, uh, you know. Just for old times' sake. That's what he wants. That's what he wants for old times' sake. Maybe we get Derwood Rockmore out there to cover him. Hey, there you go. Or, or well, hell, if uh, if Nate's shoulders, you know, better. Didn't you play DB? No, you were quarterback. Uh, I, quarterback. I lined up at DB. I would not call what I did playing DB. Uh, no, I was a receiver by trade. So. A receiver. I was uh, very. Uh, I'd say I was above average for. No, I was below average. DB. <laughs> uh, well. You know what? Herky's not young, so maybe he needs a below average DB to, to cover him for a minute. Listen, I mean, the uh, the the. Uh 
Me covering Herky. I mean, <laughs> Herky also beat, uh, what was it, uh, what was that sprinter in that, uh, who was the guy? Carl Lewis. Oh, yeah, he beat, yeah, he Carl, beat Carl Lewis in college. So, uh, I'm going to need to uh, cut Herky's hamstrings. Something. I'm going to try to cover him. Because, you got to do uh, something because, yeah. He's going to have to be a heck of a lot slower. The man is in shape. Yeah, he is. And he he's, is. He, he, hey, he's, a, he's an ordained minister. He's got God on his side. So. Absolutely. I'm just Absolutely. saying. Maybe, maybe he can be the team chaplain. I don't know what the. But that hey. would be a great idea to get Herky as a team chaplain. You heard that, right? Ron Nate. Great, great person. Herky's son is in college playing receiver uh, down in small school down in South Florida, but he's doing really well. He mentioned Heiser, that he brought it up. Heiser University. I think they made the playoffs, too. Yep. So, uh, uh, who knows? Maybe one day Ben will be coaching uh, Herky's son. So, you never know. Something. Maybe something. a couple more years and he'll be eligible. And, and Herky keeps working out like he's doing. It could be a father-son duo on the Predators. You just never know. Because well, the man I think the is son has a pretty good chance. <laughs> I think Herky would even probably bet. I think Herky could give you plenty of routes. You know, but our but at our age and Herky's a few years older than me, it's it's the hit stick that, that you probably can't recover. And the hits that keep I can't coming. speak for him, I can speak for me. The hits that keep coming after you're done in the next for one good play and that's gonna be a screen. <laughs> but uh no great great people and, and it's always great to have the, the legends of arena football, especially the Atlanta Predators be involved with your organization. We got some people watching. Mary Beth Scott, our one of our season ticket sales uh, associates, says hello, gentlemen. Now Milton State has got a question for you, Commissioner. He says, "Will there be any changes in the game rules this season?" So great question. We're we're always looking at ways to make the game better and uh, keep up with the time, so to speak. There's a couple of things that we're bouncing around uh, as far as tweaks to the game. Uh, we made one change. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure if we actually made it before last season or before the 2020 season it never happened. And one of those uh, one of those rule changes was after a safety, the kicker's not eligible to get the deuce. So that was one that we had in place that really never got tested until last year. I think it happened two or three times. So they're like, oh, okay, well we need to we need to change that. So basically, if a defensive team gets a safety, the kicker is not eligible to get the deuce. Now he can still kick it through the uprights to get on the five yard line and if he misses it goes to the 20 but what I would imagine is going to happen is kickers are probably going to pooch it or squib it or keep it in play so that they don't get penalized to the 20 yard line. Yeah because if you don't if you don't get the deuce hell you're coming out the other team's coming out basically midfield. Yeah absolutely absolutely if you don't get the deuce that doesn't exist after a safety so that's one rule change that's definitely uh, already on the books so to speak. You know, there's a couple little things here and there that we're, we're taking a look at, but the goal of our league is to keep the integrity of the Arena Football League, right? The, the history of Arena Football, the way we played it. I mean, honestly, if it was up to me, and I bring this up every year, I'd go back to Ironman football, bring back the Nets, the whole nine. The, we're going to get there. Uh, hopefully. I, I, I think it, I would love to get back to Ironman football. The Nets, on the other hand, there's a number of factors with the Nets that, that's kind of preventing that. And the main reason has to do with injuries and, and injury prevention. And uh, and that's why we try to make the kicking game as exciting as possible without the nets. So, uh, you know, the whole outdoor game is going towards less and less kickoff returns and, you know, less and less of those long distance impacts. And, you know, catching the ball at the net, guy turns around and catches the ball, then, then he turns to the field and he's five five yards away from guys barreling down at full speed. And a lot of times that's not uh, a good uh, good result for the return. So that was part of the reason why the Nets didn't make their way into our league to begin with. It had nothing to do with we couldn't use the Nets. They, uh, I think the uh, patent on that expired maybe about five or six years ago or something. I think it was after 20 years, so maybe it was around 2017 maybe. Or so if it, if it was voted in, if it was voted in and it was unanimous, decision or majority of the Nets could come back. They could. It's up to the ownership groups and, and what they want to do and they have to they have to analyze a number of things. One is the risk reward as far as injuries. The other is the cost factor involved because some of these teams don't even have the net systems anymore. So now that's a one time cost, but then you have an additional setup and breakdown cost in the arena. So there's there's just all kinds of things that factor into it. But uh, you know I, I think it's a possibility 
responsibility. And I think it would be exciting to have them. But when it comes to the offense and defense, we want to keep the integrity of our sport alive. Because I remember that was one thing Ricky Walls loved. He loved playing it off the net. That's what he is. I mean, him and I had a, had a, had a good discussion about it. He said, I, I, that's where I excel. So that's where he felt that he really excelled, was catching off the net and going. I mean, I think it's an exciting part of the original game. And, uh, you know, we'll just see where it goes. You know, the Ironman football side of it, I, I mean, I love it. But, you know, I, I don't get, so I don't get a vote on anything, right? I can simply present ideas, even when it comes to expansion teams. I don't get any votes on it, right? So uh, we just present the owners and try to present the pros and cons. And, you know, they, uh, they, they move on from there. You know, I think, uh, I mean, I'm hopeful that they reconsider it. But at the end of the day, I think the game's great. I, I think one of the problems that, uh, I'm going to get myself in trouble here. One of the problems I think coaches have is that they're not sure if the athletes today can, can play both offense and defense. I mean, they're, uh, I mean, they're specialized in high school now. There's very few kids that play on both sides of the ball unless you come, come from a really small school. Uh, you know, like the big schools around on the west side of town, like the Dr. Phillips and the West Oranges, very few guys are playing both offense and defense. So, uh, I mean, I look at it like the athletes, so, you know, you know, we've had guys traditionally in the arena league that have gotten opportunities in the NFL because of they were playing multiple positions, you know, and, and were able to get a shot because of their athletic ability and the fact that they could do more than just play X or play Y, you know? Gotcha. Uh, hey, listen, if you guys at home and you couldn't make it in here to fish on fire tonight you want to call in and ask the commissioner a question call 407-595-1179 it should be up on your screen here directly um give us a call ask the commissioner a question uh just watch your language all right yes sir <laughs> and i'll say to one guy that's uh, uh making a comment on facebook not yet so not Mark, yet. Mark, 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 not yet, not yet, Mark. All right. Um, I appreciate Marty Medovic up there in West Virginia with the Rough Riders. Great guy, great guy, and uh, just uh, told me the other day when I talked to him that he's uh, uh, cancer free. So he went through awesome. the congratulations, so, uh, Mark. Congratulations, Marty. Really, really excited for you. Gotta get new glasses. I said Mark. That's Mark down there. Uh, Marty, congratulations. Um, right. So let, let me ask you a question. Um, it's been announced over the, I think it was last week. Yeah, it had to be last week. Because today is Monday. But um, with Dwayne The Rock Johnson buying the XFL for $15 million, which is probably a steal uh, to buy a whole league, uh, will that, how will that end, or will that affect arena football in the NAL? No, I don't think so, not at all. I think any opportunity for these young men to, to play football anywhere is good. There's so many great athletes out there that need an opportunity, and this is just another avenue for these guys to play football. Uh, we are a different brand of football, and uh, there's always going to be a spot, in my mind, there's always going to be a space in the sports world for arena, for the National Arena League. So I don't think it's going to hurt us at all. It'll give some guys, I don't know what their pay is going to be, but if it's anything like what they were announcing, before it's going to be a lot of money, um, possibly more than the Canadian Football League. So they're going to attract a lot of good players. I mean, at the rate that college football is going right now, they might want to start making deals with some of these players just turn pro. Exactly right. Um, they're, they're, I mean, I don't even know when their their schedule runs. I think it's after we are, isn't it? I, I have no idea. I, I have no idea. I, I, the, they, the last outdoor league started before, and they were slated to finish right about when we started. And then they folded. And then they folded. And uh, so, yeah, no idea what was happening with that one. I think the XFL might have might be funded a little bit better. I would assume. I don't know. Maybe they, you know, maybe there are a lot of guys from the uh, the, the UFL or whatever. What's the other league? Um, yeah. Can they, oh, uh, as far as no, the U old U US, Oh, AAL. No. Um, USFL. The last hour of the league they had over. So the AAF, I mean, maybe, you know, they did a lot of good things, right? You know, especially here in Orlando, they had a great team. 
Uh, I went to uh, one of the games. I actually had tickets to the to the one that got canceled. Uh, actually, my good friend uh, Matt Storm hooked me up with those. Uh, another blast from the past, Matt Storm, former Predator lineman. Uh, he was actually the first offensive line coach that I ever hired as a head coach uh, back in 2002. Uh, I love Matt. We had a, we had a great two-year run. He was a great guy, but he was the one hooking me up with tickets. And uh, so we'll see if the XFL has learned from the AAF's mistakes or from the stuff they did good and the stuff that they did wrong. So, you know. Well, The Rock is pretty cool business smart and his ex-wife is his partner and she's his manager of this and that and, and so I wish him nothing but success. You yeah, know. me too. It's, it's more football, more opportunity for exactly these guys. It doesn't right. affect us at all. Exactly right. Um, question for you now is because I've had other people ask me, but let me throw this in here at you because it was, it was sent in earlier by somebody that I know and in your coaching days, who was your favorite player? A loaded question. Yeah. I mean, well, it wasn't. You know. That's not my question. This comes from. Yeah. No. No, actually, no. It yeah. was not. No, been, we we coached been against been each better. other. But as a head coach, or just as a coach in general, my favorite player. I'll give you a hint. He's been on the show before. Right, who, who, who am I supposed to say? <laughs> BJ. BJ. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. He's a, Top, top three, that's easy. At least one of them is. You're right, E.J. Burt. E.J. Burt. What do you mean you're right? I didn't tell you. No, you know, E.J. Burt was uh, the best defensive lineman to ever play for me. He had 27 and a half sacks in one season. And that's back when we played Iron Man. He probably would have had 40 if all he did was play defense. Uh, I remember uh, calling down to Orlando and saying, you got to take a look at this kid. This kid's really good. And they're like, they're like, we heard he's really light. He's like 230 pounds. It's like, no, he's like 270. I'm fine. But, uh, so EJ was working really hard in the offseason after the 2002 season, putting on a lot of weight. You know, I don't know how he did it, but apparently he weighed in at like 265 and uh, had one practice. Uh, I remember, I don't know if Les called me or I called Les Moss. He was coaching with the Predators at the time, but I said, hey, how did EJ do it? He goes, he goes, man, we're signing him right now. I said, good job. And the rest is history. So EJ Burt, definitely one of them. Uh, I had another, a lot of the guys I had, there's so many good characters. I had this kid named uh, Charles. Frederick. Now this kid played, uh, he's from Miami, but he played at the University of Washington. His nickname was E.T. And uh, he was just, he was just dynamic. He was magic. He was a receiver that, that could play uh, a little bit of linebacker as well. And uh, during 2016, I was up in Spokane, he got player of the week, I think, four out of five weeks in, you know, like in wow. succession. So, uh, you know, he's rookie of the year, you know, one of the players of the year. And uh, if it wasn't for injuries that cut his career short, he would have had a, a long, long career. But there's just so many, so many great people out there. It's, it's hard to, you know, even go down to three. Uh, yeah, right. I'll stick with those two for now. That works. That works for me. Um, like I said, if you're out at home and you couldn't make it in to fish on fire tonight, you just don't want to go out, call me, 407-595-1179. You can uh, ask the commissioner any questions that you want. Uh, let's see here. Time frame. Because I've had, believe me, anything that comes in through the Predator's office on the website, I see it. And they want to know, is there a time frame when you will announce when our first game for 2021 season is? Yeah, we're, we're targeting either the last week of March or the first week of April. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of factors influencing that, you know, as we get through this uh, this uh, craziness, right? But, uh, so yeah, we're, we're targeting the first week of April. The things that could influence that are, if we have an even number of teams, then we can start maybe a little bit later than normal because we don't have to have automatic bye weeks, right? But if we have an odd number of teams, that extends the, the season by three weeks automatically just because not everybody can play every week. So uh, the goal is to determine when the championship game is and work backwards in a perfect world. So we're still targeting championship, you know, early August. So I understand first game's going to be in April, kind of like that. But as far as releasing a schedule to where we know or the fans know, because you can make a schedule and just throw the, throw the teams in, you know, as far as moving it around, correct? 
Well, pretty much. You know, the, the biggest thing that we're dealing with right now is not having dates from the arenas. Right. We have them from about half of our venues right now, but there are some venues that just have not given us dates. You know, and, and I'm not going to say who those arenas are. And I understand that. That's but, it. but, you know, there's other forces involved that, that maybe get first priority uh, over our league, which is hard to believe. Well, I know, I but, know. But when you have certain types of other sports in there, like basketball. Basketball. You know, and, and uh, hockey. But no, so but they don't even have they don't even have dates for them yet because of everything that's going on. So right. it's all relative. It's, it's not that the arena doesn't want to give us dates. As a matter of fact, you know, using Orlando as an example, they basically say, hey, throw out the dates that you want and you know, if we have to adjust we will. And that doesn't always work with us because if you adjust one game that, that could affect the whole league. You know, if you have let's say let's say Orlando wants to play on a Friday night and then all of a sudden they get bumped to a Thursday, that probably won't work. Right. So or, or let's say we have a, a Friday night game and it gets bumped and the team coming in is flying. And they've already bought their tickets. So you know we want to have at least as much uh, of a firm date as we can. We understand Understand things can change and dates can change, but we try to make the schedule in, in a sense that, you know, once we know what these other leagues are doing, we know where our schedule is really solid and we know where it has to have some flexibility. And when I know if, if we have that flexibility in the beginning, for example, then we would have teams coming that are driving with that. That way they can adjust their uh, their travel plans. So it's just, it's not as easy as, a, oh, it's, it's not it's as easy. It's a predator shot. It's not as easy as, uh, just creating the schedule and announcing it, you know, if you do announce it and you create all the, the promotional items and the schedule changes, then you've just wasted thousands of dollars and you've got to blow it up and redo all that promotional stuff. So uh, our goal is to have it here in the next uh, six, seven weeks, though. Okay. Keep in mind, these are not questions, a lot of these are not questions from me, but from the fans. They, they, they want to know, you know, they got these questions, so I'm asking you. Yeah. I put it out there. Hey, listen, ask me whatever you want. I will ask the commissioner. So there's your answer. And I'm on that. always going to answer the best I can. And, of you know, course. Sometimes I have to bite my tongue if something like a big announcement's coming, like Thursday morning around 10.30. Like 10 Thursday 30 morning around 10 30 or so. But yeah, so ask away. I'm, I'm happy to answer them. And, and uh, you know, if I can't get it answered, then there's probably a reason. Uh, and I believe that. that, that, that Thursday conference, news conference is going to be uh, uh, streaming, live. streaming live. I think Cycle Fever TV is going to be uh, streaming it live. I think the Orlando Predators are probably going to stream it live as well. I'm sure you guys will be announcing it in approximate time on Facebook. I'm, I'm on pretty Cycle sure TV. it'll be it'll be thrown out there. Um, speaking of Cycle Fever TV, I want to thank Cycle Fever TV for coming in, giving us these lights so you can see how. Uh, Hail we are. These lights are pretty bright, aren't they? You can't, it's hard to see. Now I know what it's like when if somebody's on stage, a, a real stage, and the audience out there, you can't see anything. So listen, if anybody out there, if you can hear me, if you have any questions for the commissioner or myself, bring it on, bring it on up here uh, at home. Call 407-595-1179. Uh, ask any questions you want for the commissioner. I think it's time for those, though. I think one's for you, right? There you go. Unless you Enjoy. want two of them. <laughs> Enjoy. Salute. That's a predator shot. Get your predator shot, folks. Those yeah, if you're watching online, you know. I, didn't, I see you didn't bring your better amp tonight. No, I didn't. So our daughter is getting ready to go off to college on Wednesday. So I saw that. Uh, she's gonna go play soccer for Palm Beach Atlantic. Go sailfish. So uh, super excited for her because uh, she's coming off of two ACL injuries. She tore both of her ACLs. Her sophomore, she tore her left her sophomore year and her right her junior year. And she's battled back to get in great shape. And she's super strong. And uh, I'm just super excited for her. She's my baby girl. So that's awesome, bro. That, no, that's great. 
Congratulations. We're, we're excited That's for her. It's tough to be battling back from two ACLs. It is, but I mean, she's so mentally and physically tough. I mean, much tougher than, than me. I think she gets it from her mom, which is... That's probably right. I, I, uh, I met your wife. I know your wife. <laughs> She's she going to be a, a, a sailfish uh, here in about two days. Exciting time for us. It is. Now, I, let me ask you a question. Does she stay on, on campus down there? She will be staying on campus. Yeah. Okay, because uh, I know uh, Crazy John Cheney, his daughter goes to Auburn. She's the Auburn Tigers. And they had to come off of uh, campus or something for a certain period of time and then move back on. Right. I think, uh, you know, when, when you go to a smaller, in this case a small Christian school down there in West Palm Beach, the rules are a little bit different than when you go into a huge university like an Auburn or, or like a you know, Florida State or whatever. So, uh, you know, we're thankful for that. She wanted the, the smaller campus. She wanted the smaller classroom sizes. So it's working out to be a win-win. Now, they have delayed their soccer season. They play Division II. They've delayed that to the spring, but uh, they're going to be playing in the spring. And, uh, fortunately, with everything she's gone through, she, it didn't really affect her mentally or emotionally, so she's, she's looking forward to it. Well, that's good, man. I, congratulations on that. At, athletics, athletics. Athleticism. That's it. That's it. Nice. Runs in the family now. <laughs> Hey, I want to tell everybody one more time here. Welcome to Fish on Fire. Welcome to Pred Talk. I have the commissioner of the National Arena League, Chris Siegfried, here. But I want to tell you guys, listen, enjoy yourself. When you're sitting down, you do not have to wear your mask. But if you're getting up and walking anywhere, if you're walking to the restroom, walking to the bar, walking outside, please put your mask on, all right? They have... Uh, regulations that they have to follow, so, you know, let's keep them open. And one of my questions here, now back to you, Chris, of course, they had a survey out there, and the, the big thing was they wanted to bring back the Nets and the Iron Man rules, so what they have to do, I guess, possibly in the next owner's meeting, could be brought up just so the fans, you know, know that it's Absolutely. And rest assured, I bring it up every year, you know, and, uh, but at the end of the day, the main goal with the team, with the league and, and the teams is to survive, number one, right? And, uh, you know, learn from the mistakes of the original Real League and, and why they're not here today. And, uh, and just for the record, like, you know, I've always loved the arena football, and I've always loved the arena football league, and it is kind of sad that they went away. Uh, however, you know, it gives us a, a unique opportunity to uh, carry the torch for the uh, uh, for arena football moving forward. And uh, I just can't get out of my mind how incredible playing arena football, you know, going to games and watching games, playing back in the 90s was. And that's, to me, when I, that's what I want us to be like. I want it to be like the crazy party atmosphere, playing games and having these players just uh, just showing off for the fans. And uh, I, I do know this, that, that, that Tampa has requested that uh, their opening game be the Orlando Predators. And, uh, and we're going to try to make that happen in Tampa. Apparently, and Ben, ben probably remembers this, I'm not sure, but uh, what I was told and, is that the very first game for Tampa was Orlando in Tampa. That had to be like 1991. Well, 91 was the, the beginning of the right? It was the beginning of the league. Yeah, well, well the beginning of the Orlando Predators. I think uh, 87 or 86 was the very first year, but 91 was Orlando's first year, I know right. that sure. And if I get Ben's attention, uh, Ben Bennett, Ben Bennett. Coach Ben Bennett. Was Tampa's first year 1991? Tampa, their first year 1991, was their first game against Orlando in Tampa? So we're going to have to make that happen. The first game for this year will have for Orlando and Tampa. It's going to have to be Orlando at Tampa. Who knows? Maybe they'll play it in the Tropicana Dome or the uh, fairgrounds. <laughs> you know, uh, he probably could uh, if he's available. <laughs> Ben's, uh, Ben's on IR right now, but he thinks he should be ready by sometime in April. Uh, 2024. <laughs> 
<laughs> that would actually be pretty cool. We gotta get we gotta get Jay out there to do the honorary coin toss. And uh, for those that don't know, uh, uh, I don't know if I can announce who Tampa's head coach is. I mean, uh, they, the really, they really haven't made a secret want. about Stevie Thomas being their head coach. So I'm not sure if I can announce that. Uh, Nate, who? Stevie Thomas. Wow. Ben, ben knows who Stevie Thomas is. <laughs> Stevie Thomas. <laughs> Staff played for the uh, Tampa Bay Storm at one point in time. And the Preds, right? Did Nancy. Stevie play for the Preds a little bit? I didn't know that. Excellent. There you go. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna bring back we bought, we're bringing back the war on I four, and then of course with uh, with Jacksonville, you know we, we got a whole state championship going on in the South. I tell you what, this the Florida is. is uh, Two-time, two-time champion Jacksonville Sharks. Am I correct? Two-time champion Sharks. You've got the unbelievable Orlando Predators that are. That there is, man. There's so much. I, I, I want to say, you know, it's people are going to be so shocked. They're going to be scared to play the Predators. I don't care if you're a defending champion. Uh, Jacksonville Sharks or West Virginia Rough Riders in your other league where you're a champion or that other team uh, that may be announced uh, Thursday. I don't care. You're, you better be afraid when you come to Orlando and, and come to the jungle. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm sure they're going to be much more afraid than they were in uh, the last season. Oh, I so. You know what? I but you know what? At the end of the day, at the end of the day, they got the team back, and uh, you know we're excited to have them. So uh, the good news for Ben is the bar hasn't been set so high that he can't uh, attain that. Uh, no, he can still stand at it. <laughs> so, but no, it, it's exciting. I've seen you know some of the guys that, that Ben has been going after and signing, and, and of course he's going to re-sign all those guys. Yeah. But uh, I don't want to cut you off, but I see this all going on on Facebook, to where I see signings of this player. Or re signing of this player, or re signing of that player. From now, is there like any rules to that as far as, as far as, because I like to say, for instance, uh, Jacksonville may have a player we would love to have. Can we steal them or they got first dips? So basically, any player that signed a 2020 contract is protected until the end of. September, based on their contract, and it's and we're giving those teams the first opportunity to re-sign those players. Uh, but the one thing Ben and I talked about the other day, uh, post surgery, was he's able to sign free agents now. So guys that don't have any affiliation with another National League really team, he can sign. But he has until the end of September to get all the guys re-signed that were signed for the 2020 season. So they're it's a, it's a protected period for each team that has those guys signed. It, they they deserve to have the first opportunity. Gotcha. Okay, good. Well, that's good to know. You know, because I, I've had a, uh, I've had the privilege of meeting quite a few of our players that were scheduled for the 2020 season, and unfortunately, some of the players from the 2019 season who we've grown to know and love got got stolen by other teams. And I mean, they didn't steal them, but I say that. But I mean, it's like. If they're not signed and they're free agents, boom, we can get us. You know, and at the end of the day, I mean, Orlando's a pretty easy place to recruit players. I mean, the arena's first class. The uh, the housing, well, once they learn how good the housing is, it's going to be a, a competitive advantage for Orlando. Of course, the fans, uh, you know, the fans are some of the best in, in the history of arena football. I, I'm always partial to Orlando just because it's where I got my first taste of arena football. So I can say with confidence that Orlando has the best uh, arena fans in the world. But, uh, but with that said, I mean, or, you know, who wouldn't want to come to Central Florida to play uh, arena football? Without a doubt. I mean, downtown Orlando playing at the Amway Center, the real jungle. I mean, right. 
there's, there's nothing like it. Absolutely. And so I'm going to get to the jungle part in a minute. Uh, but, you know, Jacksonville, too. I mean, Jacksonville's a pretty easy place to go. They're right on the beach. And now with Tampa. So it's going to be, you know, floor. <laughs> There's some fans out there that are, what? That are cheering Tampa. But uh, the team in Columbus, Georgia, the Columbus Lions, uh, they have made the claim that, that their arena is the jungle. I think, did we, did we have a giant? Uh, <laughs> did, they said lions don't live in the jungle. Lions don't live in the jungle. Uh, lions don't live in the they jungle. They live in the desert. Where do they live? I don't know. I heard that song, In the Jungle. What's that? Savannah? Savannah, Georgia. Well, Columbus is Georgia, so that's pretty close, right? Well, anyway, it's uh, it's definitely the battle for the jungles. I have to give Columbus some credit because they are the jungle and they're proud of that. Uh, Columbus, Georgia, that is. So, uh, you know, any 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 opportunity we have to create rivalries, we're all about. And oh, one thing I love about Columbus is they're they're good at playing the underdog role and and going in there and disappointing people. And, and I know Coach Gibson really well. We actually played against each other back in 2000 in AF2. He was in Greensboro, I was in Augusta, but uh, he, he recruits a lot of those uh, SEC and ACC players. So he's going to be loaded with some great talent. So uh, I'll be you know, excited to see those guys too. Now last season, I believe we, we, it was a draw between uh, uh, the Lions and the Predators. We, we took the first, we took the first home game, and then I believe they, they took the, the, the last one of the year. Yeah, the last one of the year. And, the last, and it was a close one. It was a close one. Yeah, they needed it to guarantee a playoff spot. Yeah, we needed it too, just to save a little bit of face. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. Okay. You always need a W. You always That's need true. a W. That's true. You know, but um, everything happens for a reason. Yeah. Uh, Mary Beth Scott, season tickets. <laughs> yeah, I know you left it up on there, and it and I didn't talk about it because we got a 20 second delay. But season tickets for the Orlando Predators. Get them now while they're at the 2020 price. All right, you're gonna get season tickets for $98 for seven home games. I got eight. You got, you got what? Eight tickets. You got eight tickets. I got eight tickets. Well, hey, you're the commissioner of the league. You know, if, uh, if Ben knows anything about arena football, it should be eight, at least eight home games, right? If ben, you talking about Ben or are you talking ben about Bennett. Morgan? No, Ben Bennett, the head coach. No, but in all seriousness, though, uh, I, I would fully expect Ben to have a, a playoff bound team in 2021. Without a doubt. Uh, yeah. Oh, well, they guaranteed it. They guaranteed it for the 2020 season. And I look, if you look on any of the home team's websites, everybody made the playoffs. So uh, we were covered on that one, I guess. <laughs> I don't know if he's carrying that over to 2021. It hasn't we'll been announced yet. We'll get Ron back up to, to do that. But, uh, no, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, establishing some old, old school arena rivalries is good. The one I four and, and and whatnot. So I got, I got to throw this out there. We got a bunch of people watching, and I only have four questions coming on for the commissioner. And what's going on? Do you not have any questions for the commissioner? Let's bring it on, guys. But back to season tickets. Season tickets, call Mary Beth at 386-624-3731. Get your season tickets for the 2021 season at the 2020 price. You're saving money. $98, all lower ball. There's not a bad seat in the house. And you get one additional home game. And you get one additional home game. So you pay less. If you've already got your season tickets, you pay for six home games. And guess what? There's going to be seven next season. So get them now because if I'm not mistaken, August 3rd and in September, we're going to the 2021 prices. So get them now because a lot of things are going to be ironed out and uh, really moving forward. Give me a call for questions for the commissioner, 407-595-1179. I don't know what that is, but I just did. I That's an Italian thing. That's it, yeah, yeah. Um, there's been a lot of talk out there, a lot of talk. And people 
people are talking that the league may be growing too fast. And they want to know, could that hurt the NAL by growing too fast? Your thoughts? I don't think so, because uh, there's been a, a number of teams that, that have expressed interest, and when we analyze those teams, we, we a few of them, we didn't feel like they were either not ready or didn't fit, fit into the footprint of, uh, of our league. So, uh, you know, growing too fast, no. I mean, I, I really don't think we are. Uh, I just think it's a matter of uh, we had an opportunity to get some, some key geographic cities, you know, uh, in, in Tampa, Baltimore, and Louisville, and, and, and one other, and and, you know, if they didn't join us, they were going to join somebody. They were all going to play in 2021, so they might as well play. Might as well join the they might as well play with the best there league out there. Without a doubt. I hear you on that. Um, now, speaking really pretty much on that same level, uh, can you tell the fans, because there's a lot of speculation out there. Uh, I mean, I, I mean a lot of speculation. Can you tell the fans what other teams that uh, – the league is looking at and joining. Maybe give us a clue. Maine Mammoths. I mean, that's a big one. I hear you know, Maine Mammoths. Maine Mammoths all the time. Get, love to get Maine back. I mean, Maine uh, had great fan support. Uh, you know, the uh, the owner, the, the primary owner of the Maine team, the original owner. The goal was to create a team and, and try to get some local ownership and. Uh, they were not able to accomplish that, so it was unfortunate that they uh, closed up shop. But uh, thank you, man. You know, I love their colors. I love their arena up there in Portland, Maine. It's a great place to visit, especially in the summertime. Uh, I didn't realize how expensive hotels were in the summertime. But, it was crazy. <laughs> but uh, Maine's a beautiful place. It, it is beautiful, and the people up there are really awesome. So I, I would definitely love to see them come back at some point. But uh, I do not foresee that happening for 2021. There hasn't been any local ownership stepping up. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but again, great arena, Blue Cross Blue Shield Arena up there in Portland, Maine. It's just a, an awesome venue for uh, the National Arena League. You know, there was another team that ended up folding a couple years ago, Lehigh Valley Steelhawks, that, that we've had multiple ownership groups try to go in there, but uh, they had some difficulty uh, getting a lease with the arena, believe it or not. So, uh, you know, that, that's sometimes when you have a, a different tenant in a building that kind of controls everything, they can they can also make it very difficult for people coming in. But uh, but uh, we've had a couple of different ownership groups try to get a team back there, but it hasn't ha hasn't happened yet. But uh, I really can't mention too much because uh, the, uh, the the conversations so far have been uh, super secret, and uh, there's only about four people that know about them. So uh, super secret. If it if it were if it were to get out. And it didn't happen, it would hurt both leagues, in my opinion. Or both teams, I should say. Both leagues. Our league. And it would, it would hurt the, the couple of two or three teams that, uh, that, that we're talking to. Because uh, everything's about timing, and, and it's got to be the right fit and the right partnership. So I, I, I do know that we have a, a number of expansion teams that have already very, very close to committing for 2022. And uh, once we get everything secured we'll make those announcements but those you know it's at least at least three teams right now that I know we're going to be adding for 2022 uh, one's an east coast team about as far east coast as you can get uh, in the Carolina region and uh, the other one's uh, the other one's a little bit further west, maybe south of Louisville, somewhere in that direction. Okay, because now I, I, I've got some other other uh, names out there that people want to know. Because uh, there's rumors out there about maybe Nashville or maybe even Cleveland and somebody even threw New Orleans out there. Is uh, I think I think I think one or two of those is a very good possibility. Yeah. And are we looking at the 2021 or are we think? No, that'd be 2022. 22. Okay. 2022. So, uh, you know, there's a couple snares out there. Two in particular. Uh, one one wasn't mentioned, but uh, where the buildings just aren't ready. Uh, there's there's an East Coast uh, city that is actually building a new venue, and they actually want to play in 2021, but they don't have a, the the right venue, and, and their venue is supposed to be uh, opening in late 2021. Which which would put them in the 2022 season. Uh, they're they're pretty solid. They're they're close to giving us uh, you know all the application stuff that they that they need. So uh, and that's in the north, northwest. 
West, East, it's ACC country. Okay. I'll leave it at that. So, so there you uh, go, people. Now, the people that ask about that, do your homework. Look who's building a, 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 an arena someplace up in there that can that can house yeah. an arena football team. Coast, so it's a, it's a coastal homework. region. I'll throw out some hints. It's a coastal region. North of Florida, south of Maryland, somewhere in one of those three or four states. So it's not south of Florida? <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> hey. No, it's not. Yeah. But, but we're, you know, uh, Jason Gibson, our expansion chairman, does a really good job, and, and uh, I get a lot of inquiries, and I pass them on to him, and, and he follows up, and, you know, there was uh, uh, a lot of interest. But like I said, a couple that physically don't have the right venue to play in, and, and those should be set for 2022. And uh, once we do get everything situated, we, we, we want to announce them as soon as we're ready to announce them, which might be as early as October, November, December. Who knows? Gotcha. So as soon as they jump on board, I mean, I'm sure they got to work out the logistics of it to get and do it properly, like what's happening on Thursday. Um, not just announce it out there and throw it out on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, going like, oh, this team here is in the NAL now. You want to do it properly, so it does take time, so be patient. Um, if you know that a team is coming, hey, I mean, nobody can control you from not putting it out there, but it will be announced in the right way. Well, not only that, with these expansion teams uh, for 2022, it's like if we kind of let the cat out of the bag now, some of these other leagues might try to go in and swoop in and try to, you know, somehow convince them to come to other leagues. Not that anybody from another league has done that to any of our teams. Right. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's happened. part of it, too. Is, you know, we want to keep all the information in-house. And it's not that we don't want to make announcements, and it's not that we're not excited about adding this team and that team and the other team or even the team in, you know, somewhere north of Pennsylvania. It's just that we have to do it in the right channel. Gotcha. <laughs> and that's out of respect. In his, for Thursday's case, you know, that's out of respect for the, the city and the, and the, oh, absolutely. the arena and the politicians involved and, and the, the community in general. They want to, you know, we, we want to make sure that the message is controlled properly. Well, yeah, we, yeah. I, I completely understand. I mean, some people are just very impatient, you know, and I can understand it. I mean, hell, we had the 2020 season got canceled. Arena football fans are hungry for football, for news, anything that, you know, pertains to the NAL and the league and their team, okay? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, number one, uh, the goal is to survive and become more stable each year. And, uh, you know, stable growth is really kind of one of the things that we talk about behind the scenes is, you know, we don't want this to fail. Nobody wants it to fail because we, we know the repercussions of that happening in the past. And, and I think a lot of people thought Orlando would fail uh, after last year. And, you know, thank goodness for, uh, for Nate. And, and to step up and basically save the franchise. Yeah, because yeah. I don't know that the fans would have taken another another time. No, there was there was too much there was too much that that happened during the end of that last season. Right. You know, uh, with the previous ownership. Yeah. It, it wouldn't have survived. You know, so. And as we grew as a league, sorry, you. but as we grew as a league, you know, like I know we've made mistakes, I've made mistakes, but one of the things we do, I think, better than any league out there is we listen to the fans. And uh, that doesn't always mean we can do everything the fans want, uh, but, uh, you know, I, I'm all about the fans. You know, I've had I've had people from other leagues contact me and talk about this rule and that rule, and the, you know, coaches really like this and coaches really like that. And my statement's always like, it really doesn't matter what the coaches want; it matters what the fans want. And how do we make our game and our sport as entertaining as possible to where the fans love it more? So if we do make changes, it's it's trying to be more entertaining for uh, for the fans. I think I found my feed for my questions. I know there's a bunch of questions down there. Jason Lucas, uh, you know who Jason Lucas is, right? Uh, 
He was been with the Predators in the past, and hopefully, fingers crossed, Jason, we can work something out, and you're coming back with us. Um, we're on the rules question. Any, any, what? Any subs? Any so he's talking about free substitution. So that that rule was uh, adopted back in 2007. Uh, they call basically platoon football now. So yes, uh, you can replace a wide. In this case, it's like you can replace a wide receiver anytime. Any position at any point in time can be replaced in between plays. So uh, we that goes back to the Iron Man rules. We don't have Iron Man where you're limited on your substitutions. Uh, there is no limit to substitution, so you can go down the field and you can put in somebody else to play quarterback or receiver or offensive line at any point in time. And it could be for one play, for, for unlimited, doesn't matter. I got a question for you, and and uh, this comes actually from my wife because I couldn't really explain it. Can you explain what Iron Man rules are? Absolutely. So great question. So Iron Man football in, in the original arena days, the you know, players would play both offense and defense, with an exception to what they would call specialists. You know, and most every quarterback was a specialist, meaning they were tagged an offensive or defensive specialist. In Ben's case, an offensive specialist. And and he was allowed to just play offense. Uh, almost all the receivers and deep the backs were, were uh, well, all the receivers were pretty much two-way players. Uh, you know, Herky was an offensive specialist, you know, uh, mainly because I don't think there's anybody in Korean football at that time that was as fast as him, and they, they, you know, he was also the kick returner, so he was, a, he was an offensive specialist. Typically, one of your best, if not your or the best receiver, was an offensive specialist and a defensive back. So, but all the other players, the linemen and the fullbacks and linebackers, they all played both offense and defense. So you'd have like, you know, on the Predators back in the day, you'd have uh, Jerry Odom, who was a natural linebacker for the University of Florida. He was a fullback linebacker. He ended up being a really, really exceptionally blocking fullback. So that's what made him such a great player in arena football. You know, uh, uh, McGowan and, and uh, the, you know, all these guys have played fullback and linebacker. You know, Matt Storm was an offensive lineman at the University of Georgia, but he played O-line and D-line. You know, Webby Burnett. You know, all these guys were two-way linemen. So that's Ironman football. I did notice we got a comment from uh, Eugenio Castro from Chile. I want to say, what's up, Eugenio? Uh, something interesting that a lot of people might not know, we're going to have in 2021 an international exemption to the roster. So, uh, and it's got to be from South America. So we've got a relationship with uh, Eugenio Castro down there in Chile, and they're developing arena football. They're developing football, but they're also developing arena football. And each team is going to allow, be allowed to dress one player from South America on game day that does not count towards your roster. And the goal is to, to help bring these guys along and, and uh, teach them the game. I know Eugenio's goal is to eventually have, uh, in 2022, he wants to have a, a team compete in the NAL as a travel team in the first year. And then if everything progresses, then eventually they want to have not only one team, but multiple teams down in South America. We'll see. That's the goal. That's that's growing. We're, I think we're the only league, I know we're the only league that has that relationship with uh, South America. So the international exemption, though, doesn't, does not include Canada, doesn't include Mexico. It's just South America. Uh, and the main reason is, you know, that's what we're trying to develop it right now. And, uh, and honestly, you know, uh, we used to have international exemption, and the first place I'd go would either be Canada or Mexico. You know, I had a lineman from uh, that, that was a dual citizen between Mexico and the U.S. He went to school in the U.S. And uh, I tell you what, he was, he was a beast. So I got, you know, it's kind of like cheating system. I just want to throw out here to Ron and Nate. Hey, Red Talk is reaching to Chile, baby. Absolutely, Chile's Chile's. <laughs> People from Chile are watching right now. There you go. <laughs> uh, let's go through some of these questions here. Let's see. Uh, of course, Mark, I would love to hear main news. Uh, but we covered that. You know, we Obviously, covered that. we're now scrolling down through some of these. Yeah. Uh, Chris suggested earlier, oh, of course, Mary Beth taking care of business there. AFL, April, okay. Well, he's talking about uh, uh, Marty up there in West Virginia chimed in. XFL was February through April, so that's even better because now we're going to get some guys that are in really good shape going from the XFL to the NAL. Without a doubt. I mean, uh, listen, I know um, I, I, I always keep it in contact with a lot of the players, not just from the Predators, but from other teams that played for us right. last season. And these guys are all 
is constantly working out. They live and breathe football. So Mark Riley, Mark Riley's got a great question. How many regular season games? I think we touched on it a little bit. Uh, we're anticipating 14. Uh, and we're kind of uh, estimating right now for uh, the first week in April. So uh, that's that's kind of the goal. Uh, first week in April, run through mid July or so. Playoffs start late July and finish up in early August. I know Marty up there is asking about the NAL kickoff classic, which was slated to be Jacksonville at West Virginia. I I still want to make that happen. You know, we have a lot of different rivalries, like uh, Orlando Tampa, obviously, is a natural born rivalry. I mean, Tampa did request Orlando week one, and I, I was like, okay, well, I can make that happen. You want this? Do you, do you know what you're asking for? Yeah, yeah. No. Those guys are excited. I met with them uh, a week or two ago. I went out to Tampa and talked to their staff, and, and um, I tell you what, they've, they've got their stuff together. I mean, they're, they're impressive over there. Uh, Chili, Chili, Chili. Felipe Castro? Castillo? He, no, Castillo. He's, he's, Castillo. he's one of the players that's, that should be coming. Uh, he, he might be playing for Columbus. I don't know. Tampa and Orlando, 1991, in the Zubaz uniform. I love that. Yeah, right. I would love, I would love to see Tampa bring back the Zubaz uniform. We we'll have to make that happen, Jackie. Jason Lucas. And we just gotta find someone that has that that type of material, not the material, but the, the colors. Was that there? Yeah, Stevie won the arena ball. Yeah, I didn't know that. 14 with the Predators. I did not know that. That was towards the end of his career then. Uh, what we got here? I'm in a room for seeing you guys play. News. We'll be back in 2021. There, uh, Terry and Eve. Let's yeah. see here. Uh, da -da -da -da. Oh, they're playing with Terry. Who's that? What's that top fan? What's that top fan asking right below there? What right. about Iron Man and the Nets? <laughs> that would be from a, a top fan. I don't know how he got to be a top fan. He's no. like, yeah, Nathan Stark Jr. He's got his own Jr. little diamond next to him. Yeah, he's got a diamond there. It says top, get that diamond top fan. He says, <laughs> what about Iron Man and the Nets? Back at top fan, uh, NS Jr. <laughs> Make it happen, my man. Make it happen. You got to vote it in. Well, you got to vote it in. Uh, what is it? There? Lions living that? something. Two, yeah, well, maybe. Put <laughs> the cart before the horse. I might get two votes starting on Thursday. Mary Beth says, haven't you seen the Lion King? They live in the Sahara. <laughs> uh, my, okay, yep. Let's see where we at over here. While we're doing that there, let's see here. Um, I had another fan want to know. Has there been any word from any of the arenas as to like when they anticipate opening up and like with us with the Amway, of course they got concerts, this and that. The Magic are playing in the bubble, but is there any any of the other arenas out there in the NAL that are given any information out? Yeah, we've got about half of our arenas that actually have been able to confirm some dates for us, you know. So, uh, you know, but there's some areas like uh, in the northeast with Jersey that still, you know, since that was one of the, the, the harder hit areas, you know, we're still waiting to get some arena dates from, from teams like Jersey and West Virginia. But it's going to happen. It's just a matter of working through all this. I think some kind of football in the fall, in this case probably NFL and, and not much else, is going to help, you know. Uh, but, you know, we'll see. We'll get through it. Okay. Now, um, Bill, our photographer, has got a question. He says, with all, the, with, all the new, with all the new teams joining the NADL, NAL, uh, how's this landscape look, division or conference? or? You know, great question. You know, uh, it's possible to go like a north and south, you know, and, and uh, you know, we're going we're gonna to bounce around some ideas like possibly regionalizing the first round of playoffs. But uh, a lot depends on what the owners decide. You know, some owners, you know, let's let's just say it's ten teams and four teams make the playoffs. Well, some owners want just top seeded one through four. Uh, other owners would be like, okay, if we go north and south, and you basically can guarantee that the first round of the playoffs is a bus game. And in the championship, you have that bye week, and then that's the fight game. So uh, it's really going to be up to them. We're anticipating having league meetings in uh, sometime in October, and then we'll iron out the playoffs and, and how many teams make the playoffs. Uh, I think the options are four or six. 
you know, there's some creative ways to, to do both, but at the end of the day, they're going to look at the bottom line for, for money and figure out what works best and still, I think the, the biggest thing is the, the owners of the teams want the two best teams making the, the championship. So, let's say Orlando and Tampa are the two best teams. Well, if they were to play in the first round, then one of the two best teams would be kicked out. Right. I got so, you. So, um, it all depends on what they, what, what, where their priorities are when it comes to the playoffs. So, uh, yeah, but we'll, we'll make sure we get that out to you guys as, as soon as we uh, make that decision. But again, owners meetings are, are you know, preparing for them right now. We're targeting uh, sometime in mid, uh, mid October. So what you're saying, it, it, it all boils down to the owners, what they want to do as far as. Right, they, took, they, they take a look at a lot of factors. So you know, you've got 10 teams on one end, if you can go north and the south, and you know, two teams from the north make the playoffs, and two teams from the south, assuming four, four, uh, four teams, right? right. And uh, the downside to that would be if you have the two best teams are in the north or in the south, whatever, they play in the first round, the two best teams are playing in the championship. So that's been the biggest concern over the last few years on how to, you know, how to create the playoffs. We got caught up a couple of years ago where uh, 2018 season, Jacksonville lost late in the season up in Maine, and it totally screwed up the playoff season. And it was a worst case scenario for travel. And one of the things that fans may not know is the the league pays for a certain a certain amount of playoff travel to the visiting team, and that's something that they decide up front. So when that playoff travel gets out of whack, it causes uh, the money to go up higher, and then uh, it, it hurts the teams and the visitors. So sure. at the end of the day, we got to run it like a tight ship for, as a business first, and then uh, make the best decision from there. Of course, it's, it's definitely a business. And speaking of business, uh, I guess a month ago, we announced that um, fantasy football is coming to the NAL. My question is, with fantasy football coming in 2021, who's going to work that, and is it an outside source, or how is that going to work? Yeah, we, we've got a company that, uh, that we've been talking to, that we've contracted to run our fantasy football, and, uh, you know, really, uh, behind the scenes, Steve Kern is one of the managing partner up in Jacksonville. He's been working hand-in-hand uh, uh, -hand with us to create how the scoring is going to happen, you know, how many points you get, because obviously... Arena football is a lot different than the outdoor game when it comes to stats. But there's going to be basically six ways for players in fantasy football to score. You know, uh, and, and I have to get back and look at my notes, my mental notes on that. But for example, any any touchdown and kicks, points are points. So if the touchdown is six, you get six points. But I know that they're going to put value on uh, like turnovers and sacks and stuff like that for the defensive players. But offensively, it's it's uh, you know yards and points are the two biggest things, right? So obviously you're gonna have a lot of receivers and quarterbacks as your, your highest point total. I think where we're a little bit limited in fantasy football is, and depending on how we get it set up, is well if you only have ten teams, then you might be limited on how many how many teams in the league that you can have. So it's going to be a bunch of smaller leagues. So you might have a, you know, you might create your own league and call it the Preds League. But the good thing, though, well, what we hope happens is that you know, not only are you going to pay attention to the Orlando Predators, but we want you paying attention to all the other teams. All the other teams. We want you to be more engaged, not just with your team, but with all the other teams uh, and get more eyeballs on them. We want you to, we want you to pay attention to the players on Tampa, even though you might hate Tampa. We still want you wondering, hey, what did uh, Joe Smith receiver? He's, he's on my squad. How many points did he give me this week? Because you're not going to be able to do all predators because most likely you're going to have a couple predator fans in your league. They're all going to go after the quarterback. They're all going to go after the kicker. So you got to spread it around. You're going to have to pick up players from other teams. And that's what fantasy football is. You've got to spread it out. You know? Absolutely. I, I'm do you want to be, like, be all predators or do you want to win? 
Oh, yeah, exactly. Because statistically, if you pick everybody from one team, the Predators might have the best win. player in every single position, but you're not going to be able to pick all of them to win as a good ball and win. Right. Because somebody on the other team is scoring points. Exactly. And somebody else goes after you after you pick a player, somebody else is picking the one that you wanted. If you're going to go all Predators. Or if Orlando's beating the brakes off of somebody and Coach Bennett pulls out the quarterback and you need him to score some points. Exactly. Then, you know, get hurt that. So, the goal is more, more fan interaction, more eyeballs on the games, and, uh, you know, we're also uh, testing out some uh, some other stuff that can lead to future, uh, future revenue generating opportunities. For the 2021 season or positive 22? 2021 will be a test for 2022. I like it. I like uh, it. This will be the first uh, fantasy football in, in the National Arena League and possibly in any arena of football ever. So we're really excited about it and we're really excited about the things that that could lead to, not only for fan engagement, but, you know, who, who knows? You know, it's all about, you know, fan engagement and other sources of revenue for the leagues and for the teams. I like it. I like it. Anything that, anything that makes it the NAL, the National Arena League, grow, I'm all for it. And let me know what I can do, and I'll spread the word. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, Nate and Ron are looking for some more cash infusions into the Orlando Predators. So. <laughs> no, but absolutely. Yeah, and, that's what, and, that's, and that's what it's all about is, is just, you know, we want, we want to bring back the days where there was, you know, 20,000 people over there in Tampa watching them. And, and, you know, I think the old arena was somewhere around 16, 17,000 max. It was crazy. It was always hazy in that upper level. I don't know if you remember. It was like always like smoky up there. That's because when the, the players would come on and the fireworks would go off, it would just It would just uh, linger. And those luxury boxes were like a mile in the sky, right? Yeah. But uh, obviously uh, Orlando is blessed with uh, arguably the nicest arena in the country. But uh, we want to bring back those those days where people did not want to come into Orlando and play because the crowd the crowd was easily worth either one turnover or one extra touchdown for the home team. Without a doubt. We got players we got players. They are like players. We got fans that if you're a player and you you beat one of our guys, they're gonna strip the ball from you as you run by down the sideline. I cannot I cannot support a condone that. So you know gotta keep your hands outside the wall. But if they come over, you hey. the ball, do what you gotta do. They come over that, that extended wall. It's game on. It's definitely game it's on. All, it's all relative, yes. Yes. I'm gonna, um, we're gonna wrap things up here in a minute, but I wanna thank some people for coming in. Steven, Nancy, Morris, thanks for coming in. Um, I got Nick Green, Bill. I got Magic over there. Milton, Magic. I got Dickie Owens is here, Mary Lobianco, and of course Ben Bennett, Nate Starling, and uh, Ron Tredico all coming in, and everybody sitting at the bar. And while I'm saying this, remember when you're sitting down, you don't need to wear your mask. But if you get up to go to the bar, if you get up to go to the facilities, if you get up just to walk to another table, please put your mask on. All you can do is cover your mouth and uh, mouth, yeah, your mouth and nose. You don't have to cover your eyes. <laughs> um, take care of your servers. Morgan and Heather are taking care of you, so you take care of them. Thank you, Fish on Fire, for putting us on again. We may have a call. I'm liking that. Um, Absolutely. Jacksonville owners? Why not? Why not? Right. You could probably look that up for me. Greg Curran's ass down here. You know what? Steve Curran, if you happen to be watching this, you're invited down to Fish on Fire. Come on down. It's a challenge. We have a caller? Don't even let you wear your Jacksonville Sharks uh, shirt. Hey, caller, you're on the air. You might want to just take the call and... Okay, say that again. Here, hold on one second. I'll hit you right over the commission. Oh, my God. I could understand. He's on his... 
He's on a speakerphone with his windows down, I think. That's a great question. I'm going to answer that one on the air. All right? All right, thank you. The question was, uh, are we bringing the team to Albany? I think he's off. So the question was, are we are bringing, we bringing a, a team to Albany? Are we bringing a team to Albany? Well, that's I mean, a great question. We used to have question. a team in Albany, Georgia, and uh, the first year, but it didn't work out. So uh, he must be talking about another Albany. Maybe. I'm not sure. I don't tell know. you what, on Thursday, I'll answer that question on Thursday. There you go. So, hey, that's a great question. I don't know. That's a great question. I don't know who it was, but I hope that answers your question. Tune in on Thursday. Yeah, obviously, you know, we, we want to expand wherever it makes sense, uh, you know. Uh, that's got to be, I think that's a New York number, so that's got to be like the Albany. Uh, that's got to be, uh, yeah. The Albany a team, so. Yeah, we'd love to talk to them and, and uh, get them on board. I mean, you know, but we'll see what happens. Tune in Thursday. Whoever you were that called in, they called the number. Please tune in on Thursday. Uh, Cycle Fever TV is going to be broadcasting it. The Orlando Predators are going to be broadcasting it because it is here in Orlando, so we want to get in and any airtime that we can. Um, season tickets, one more time. Season tickets called Mary Beth at 386-624-3731. Starting as low as $98, you're getting the 2020 prices for, you know, the 2021 season. If you're going to get an extra game, that's somebody else who's calling in. Um, get an extra game at no extra cost. So, uh, I do have another question because people are talking. Chris, what are your thoughts on an NAL, IFL championship game? So, our champion, you know, the Orlando Predators, and the IFL, you like that? And the IFL champions playing in, in a, a championship game. Hey, I, th I think it's a good idea. Uh, I'd be receptive to it. You know, you got to figure out what rules you play, you know, and... and uh, Why step the, down in competition? If the, uh, if, the season, uh, if the season's ended at the same time, I think anything's possible. You know, they play by a completely different set of rules, so, uh, you know, I'm not sure the huge rules you play by. Our rules. Well, obviously, we like our rules, but it, it's, it, you know, they run the ball more than 50% of the time, and we don't, so. Uh, really? And they're... Well, I was, you know, yeah, so it, it's just, it's a different different style of play, and that's the biggest difference. They have, like, multiple guys in motion, and uh, their quarterbacks run around a lot. They do a lot of spread option. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a lot more running. Scoring scoring similar, you know, uh, but I've never seen with some kind of championship game. You know, maybe you play two games, maybe one game is arena rules, one game is everything. I don't know. It's definitely worth exploring. I, I, I don't like that idea. Uh, only, only because injury to players. If you play one game, our rules, one game, their rules, subjects our players to get injured. And, and, uh, that, and that's that. the toughest thing. It's, 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 the game is played different, differently. Uh, our arena rules are different. So that's the biggest hurdle is how would you make that game happen and how do you play by those rules? Because fans, fans over here are going to expect arena football. Right. And fans over there are going to expect their style of football. So I like how you said, I like you said our fans are going to expect the arena football. And their fans are going to, well, they're, they're. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, listen, they've got some great I know you meant no disrespect. Yeah. I, I uh, meant no disrespect when I said that. No, 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 I know, I know. But it's, that's the biggest hurdle is it's, it really is a completely different game. Yeah. up here in just a minute. I did want to say uh, next Monday, next Monday there will not be uh, Red Talk next Monday. I have to go out of town, so I will not be in town. Uh, we're probably going to set up uh, maybe a, a rerun of one of the earlier shows that uh, just a refresher. I'm not sure. I may just throw on, you know, gone with the wind. You know, you just never know. All right, I'll just have to agree with you on that one. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> agree to disagree. Agree to disagree. Um, but, shout outs. 
Commissioner, you got any shout outs out there? Fish on fire. Great food, even though I haven't eaten yet. I'm going to get something as soon as we're done. I know the fried shrimp, shrimp is off the chain. Might have to try something else this time. But they've always been great to me the, the three, uh, two or three times I've been here. Shout out to uh, Nate Starling and Ron Tredico and, and Ben, knee replacement Bennett. Where did Ben go? Did he leave already? He went home. His knee's probably, I mean, his knee's I probably. See, I see him over there going like, oh, my knee. Yeah. No, it was really good to see him out here. I mean, surgery, what, just a few days ago, and good to see him out and about. So I'm sure in the next couple of weeks he's going to be feeling much, much better. So thoughts, thoughts go out to Ben and his speedy recovery, and Nate and his speedy recovery, and Ron and his speedy recovery. But, uh, and, of course, the fans of Predator Nation, you know. Always great to have the fans here. And thank you so much for, for the warm welcomes you guys give me. That's much appreciated. That's why my wife allows me to come back. It's like I don't get food when I come here. Do you, you bring it home? I mean, hell, you took away half of my uh, my shout outs. But I'm going to shout out one more time, anyhow, to Fish on Fire. Thank you guys for, for uh, being sponsors of the 20, 2020 2021 season of the Orlando Predators. I want to give a huge shout out to my two favorite Psycho Fever TV guys, IT John and Big Mike. You guys are the best. Anything we need, you guys come and do it. Uh, Thursday, there's going to be, you know, a big NAL announcement, so uh, they're going to be live streaming it. Tune in to Psycho Fever TV Thursday around 10.30 or whatever, uh, and also Orlando Predators site. We're going to live stream it, too, because it's going to be done here in Orlando. So, I want to thank... I'm going to give a shout-out to uh, Magalux and Starling and Sons Auto Repair. Just let me give my shout-out. Hey, man, I'm always taking my cars to Starling and Sons. They, they treat me right. And your yeah. boat. And my boat, which I just sold. So, uh... But no, my, uh, Is that the two happiest days when you bought your boat and then when you sold it? Yeah, there is a little bit of truth to that. But uh, uh, Nate, Nate and his uh, his family took care of my daughter's Toyota. Got it all road ready for her trip down to West Palm Beach this week. So thank you very much, Nate. Starling and Sons. Starling and Sons right there. Magnum Lux right there. Hey, listen, um, I know you, you threw me off again, so I was going to Psycho Fever TV. Thank you guys so much. Uh, my wife, Mary Lobianco. I want to thank I want to thank Steve Morris and Nancy Morris for coming out here tonight and doing what you do with Predators in your face fan club. Um, I love it. Thank you so much. Keep up the good work. If you're looking for any information, you know, and if I can help just to promote the Predators, don't hesitate. You know my number. I want to thank everybody that came in tonight. I also want to thank uh, D1 Training for being a sponsor for the Orlando Predators. Florida Man Radio. Oh, I got a call. I'm going to take it. So, Let's do it. So, chat. Orlando Predators is back. Thank you for calling the Orlando Predators. Hey, Tom, you got a question for the commissioner? Okay, hold on one second. I'm going to put you on the microphone, all right? All right. As Tom, our equipment manager. Go ahead, Tom. question Tom so the question is the, the players from the 2020 season do they get carried over to the 2021 season I, I, we talked about it a little bit earlier great question Tom uh, all those players are protected until the end of September coach Bennett has until then to re-sign them to their 2021 contracts so right now they're protected Tom, thank you. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate you calling in. Hi, hi, hi. Another good question. Another good question, yes. That one I can answer. Yeah. And uh, that one we can hear. And that one we can hear. <laughs> uh, back to shout outs. Florida Man Radio. Uh, man, 105.5. That is uh, Shannon Burt, Bubba Whoop Ass Wilson. Just had. Oh my God, spinal fusion, surgery, this and that, and everything else. Get well, Bubba, love you. Uh, the Wolf 103.1. 
Of course, you already took my thunder. Nate Starling, Ron Tradico, owners of the Orlando Predators for you know giving me my dream job. I want to thank all first responders, boys in blue, ladies in blue. Keep up the good work. Uh, oh, we got another call. Jesus, we're not going to end this. Hold on one second. This is from New Haven, Connecticut. Orlando Predators, this is Pat. Getting a lot of calls from the Northeast. Okay, one second. I'm going to put you on speaker, all right? All right? New Haven, Connecticut. That'd be a great place for a team. Go ahead. You're on the air. Hey, hey, it's fun to see you guys with a team in the Connecticut. We're the 33rd largest stadium market in the United States. That's a great question. Connecticut's a great place. Uh, I think New Haven and, and uh, Connecticut, Rhode Island, the areas up there are, would be great opportunity for us to expand in the NAL 2022. So let's get some uh, local ownership up there and let's put a team in New Haven. Bridgeport. Uh, yeah, Brid Bridgeport's the arena that's about, what, about 40 minutes outside of New York City? I think, I think that Absolutely, those are three great cities. Talking about Bridgeport, Connecticut, and uh, and uh, uh, the Mohegan Sun up there, and where, that's out, what outside of man. No, where's the Mohegan Sun? No what's idea. the city? What's the city up in Mo where the Mohegan Sun is? <laughs> Okay, yeah, and, I, and I've actually coached in that arena. It's a great venue. It's, a, it's an arena attached to a casino up there, uh, the Mohegan Sun Arena. It's a great venue. But for sure, uh, th those areas are great, especially uh, Bridgeport. I think that they need a sport. They need something like arena football up in Connecticut, uh, especially Bridgeport. Because I don't think they really have a major tenant in there right now. Absolutely. So, no, that's a great idea, and it's one that was explored last year, but it didn't come to fruition. But I think uh, I think that's a great idea, and it's something we're going to look into for sure. Thank you. For, thank you for the call. Thank you for the call. All right. Thanks for the call. Yes, All right. Bridgeport would be a great spot for um, for a national Arena league team. Absolutely. So, like I was saying earlier, I mean, if anybody else wants to call in before I'm done and we sign off, boom, call in. But uh, finished my shout outs. I think I finished my shout outs. Uh, shout out again one more time to Psycho Paper TV. Just to everybody, a reminder we will not be having Fred Talk next Monday. We'll be doing something. We'll figure it out. Follow Orlando Predators. We'll post it on there what we're going to do. Uh, again, please, if you're in Fish on Fire and you're walking around, please wear your mask. Once you're sitting at a table, you can take your mask off. But if you're walking around, you're going to the facility, you're going to the bar, you're going outside, please put your mask on. We want these guys to stay open so these fine folks can make a living, all right? Uh, that's what all I got. Chris, you got anything else? I just want to thank everybody and thank Cycle Fever TV. See you guys on Thursday. And after that, we're out. Peace and go Pirates. Go Pirates. Go